Good morning. Welcome to Read the Word. Read the Word. Today, we are actually, like actually, actually, today we are actually going to read, I think, probably one of my most favorite stories in the whole book of First Samuel. I keep trying to make it my whole favorite story of the whole Bible, but um, this is the story of David and Goliath. And David said, is there not a cause? And it's time to get up and stand up. And why are you guys hiding in the caves and in holes like you're a bunch of scaredy cats? And so David's just taking it out. And um, not only that, but Saul loses his kingdom because he won't deal with the enemy like he's supposed to deal with the enemy. And you and I have been the witness of this ever since we started this program. Um, we've been the witness of those who did not do what they were supposed to do and the damaging effect of it. And um, you might think, did anybody in the Old Testament ever get it right in any sense of the word? <laughs> and the answer is, yes, some of them actually did get it right. And uh, David, even though David messes up later, gets it right. Well, I've done gone to preaching. This is going to be a very difficult one not to preach in. Let's go now and pray our opening prayer. Father, I open my spirit, soul, and body to be led by you today so that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith so that I will be rooted and grounded in love and all of these two. And we will be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height. So I will know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. That I, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. And that's a lot of fullness. It is a lot of fullness. All of the fullness of God is a whole lot of, whole lot of fullness. Here we go. First Samuel chapter 15. Saul spares King Agag. 3, 10. Samuel also said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he, Im excuse me, how he ambushed them on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them. Kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul gathered the people together, numbered them in Telem. 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah. That's a big old army. Yeah, it is. It's a big old army. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the Kenites, go, depart, get down from the, among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. Saul attacked the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive. 
and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Was he supposed to take the man alive? No. Take them all out. Verse 9. Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good and were unwilling to destroy them. But everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. Verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I am, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me, has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried out to the Lord all night. Why did it grieve Samuel? Well, he had anointed him. And Samuel could see how good he was. Verse 12. So, when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul went to Carmel, and indeed he set up a monument for himself. And he has gone on around, passed by, and gone down to Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. But Samuel said, what then is the bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen, which I hear? Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet. And I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, speak on. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not the head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go Utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord God? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back, back King Adag, I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took off the plunder, sheep and oxen, the best of the things that should have utterly been destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. Samuel said, has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion is witchcraft. Stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned around to go away, Saul seized the edge of his robe, and it tore. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today, 
and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor relent, for he is not a man that he should relent. Then he said, I have sinned. Yet honor me now, please, before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, bring Agag, king of the Amalekites, here to me. So Agag came to him cautiously. And Agag said, surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hacked Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah. And Saul went to his house at Gibeah of Saul. And Saul went no and Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Now, it is 1125. Has the Lord a delight in burnt offering? No. To obey is better than to make a sacrifice. Rebellion is witchcraft. There's just no way around it. It's just witchcraft. And stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. Powerful words for any generation. Old covenant or new covenant. And it's a it's one that's a wake up call for many people to say, hold it. I might never let a witch in my house, but am I in an act of rebellion? Am I being stubborn? Why? Because stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. And of course, those cannot be accepted by God. First Samuel 16, because I could really preach, but I'll save it for another day. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his com coming and said, do you come peaceably? Obviously, Samuel was a powerful man in Israel. Verse 5, he said, peaceably, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves. Come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliam and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his physical stature. Because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. You can say what you want with your, whip, with your whips. <laughs> with your lips all day long. But God knows your heart. My goodness. So Jesse called Abinadab, made him pass before Samuel, and Samuel said, no, nah, not this one. Jesse made Shammah pass by. He said, no, nah, not this one either. Verse 10, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Well, you got to know now that Samuel's like, who is it? 
Then Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him for he is the one. Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. And the spirit wasn't from God. The spirit was of the devil. But... um. God didn't stop it because Saul kept choosing to rebel against God. Verse 15, Samuel, Saul's servant said to him, surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let your, our master now commend your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. And it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you and you shall be well. Saul said to his servants, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Then one of the servants answered and said, look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who's skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, handsome person, and the Lord is with him. You see all those qualifications David had? Yeah. He was skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war prudent in his speech, handsome person, and the Lord is with him. He was a shepherd. <laughs> 19, God just has different rules, that's all. Verse 19, therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David who is with the sheep. Jesse took a donkey, loaded it with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat. Sent them by his son, David to Saul because David was a door dasher. <laughs> you, don't, you don't usually get it that easy. He, he, he was a delivering Uber Eats to Saul. All right. <laughs> 21. David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer. Saul sent to Jesse saying, please let David stand before me. He's found favor in my sight. So it was. Whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. If God was sending that spirit, God wasn't going to let it leave just because though David showed up with a harp. God was going to have it there for a reason and it was going to deal with him. So the demon got stirred up because Paul accepted the spirit of witchcraft in his life. Chapter 17, 18, 35. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Succa, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Succa and Azekah and Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel gathered together and camped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. I love this chapter. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Big old boy. Big boy. Yeah. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. Wow. He had a bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Imagine what that bronze javelin looked like gleaming in the sun. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and a shield bearer went before him 
Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you are the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants of Saul. Choose a man for yourself. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. No, 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 no. No. 10. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we must fight together. That was the dumbest thing you can say. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Verse 12. Now David, the son of the Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, who had eight sons, and the man was old, advanced in years in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to the battle. The names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, firstborn, next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. 15. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days. That's serious. Morning and evening. 1 Samuel 17, 17. Then Jesse said to his son, David, take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and these 10 loaves and run to your brothers at the camp. Doesn't that sound like DoorDash <laughs> is delivering a little Caesar's pizza? Yes, it does. I love it. Carry these 10 cheeses to the captain of the thousands and see how your brothers fare and bring back news of them. Had a double order. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Not really. They were hiding. David arose in the early morning, left the sheep with a, hunt, a keeper, took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he commanded the camp and he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array Army against army. Craziness. David left his supply in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brother. As he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath, by name coming up from the army of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. The men of Israel said, Have you seen this man? Who's come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches and give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. <laughs> David Woo! said, sign me yeah. up. All right. Now, then David spoke to the men who stood by saying, what did you say would be done for this guy who takes away the reproach from Israel? Did you notice it doesn't say just kill the Philistine? Take away the reproach from, from Israel. People answered in the same manner, saying, so shall it be for the man who kills him. Eliab, his oldest brother, when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? A little derogatory brotherly rivalry, isn't there? I know your pride in the insolence of your heart, for you have come. <laughs> for you have left those few sheep in the wilderness. I know your pride in the insolence of your heart, that you have come down to see the battle. David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Underline it, highlight it, circle it, whatever you do, because there is a cause 
and as a cause for every one of us to fight. He turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him at the first, as the first ones did. When the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and he sent for him. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go out and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth and he is a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered it. I like that. The lamb from its mouth, and when it arose against me, caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Woo! That's a brave boy right there now. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, This the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord is with you. David clothed, so Saul clothed David with his armor, put a bronze helmet on his head, also clothed him with a coat of mail. David said, no man needs to have that much mail. <laughs> I love it. All right. I lost my place making a joke. Mail is a sort of a coat of uh, steel that covered their whole body so they couldn't oh, get an arrow. Okay. Okay. Uh, 39, David fastened his sword to his armor, tried to walk for he had not tested it. And David said to Saul, I can't walk with these. I've not tested them. So David took them off took his staff in his hand. He chose for himself five smooth stones. You know why he chose five smooth stones? Because uh, Goliath had five smooth brothers. Stones from the brook, and he put them in his shoulders bag. And a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. I mean, it really is true. That's why. Because he had five brothers? He had five brothers, yeah. David was going with rapid fire missile process if he needed it. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. Don't do that. For he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the church of Jesus Christ says, yes, you are a dog, and you're going to be a dead dog. And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. I think this Philistine's made about 10 major mistakes so far. The Philistine said to David, come to me. I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beast of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, <clears throat> with a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. 46, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know there is a God in heaven. Now see, yeah, listen to this yeah, in Israel. If you're making, this is 2908, really? Wow. If you're making all those big statements so you can be seen as a big tough dude, you get your reward as soon as man sees you. Yep. However, if you look at the enemy and say, I'm taking you out in the name of Jesus for the, the blessing of the church, all of heaven stands ready to help you get her done. Right. Oh, where was I at? 30, 48, 47. 47. All this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you 
into our hands. I love it. So it was when the Philistine rose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it. And the and it stuck, struck, it struck, struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down along the road to Shereim, even as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor in his tent. He took that giant's head with him. Oh, Lord have mercy. Woo! 55. Was his eyes closed or were they open? When Saul saw David coming out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? Abner said, as your soul lives, O king, I do not know. So the king said, inquire whose son this young man is. Then as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistines in his hand. And the Saul said to him, whose son are you, young man? So David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Now, this is our longest session so far. However, this is a good one. He totally shoulder fire missile this this uh de demonized giant and they killed all of them and the giants were no more i mean goliath is 10 foot tall that's a tall human being and david wasn't very big was he and david was 16 years old and a ruddy youth but here here's the revelation of it david's faith was not in his ability and his human strength david's yeah. faith was in the Lord of hosts, Jehovah, is with me, and he is not going to let me fall. Right. And David knew it from watching the sheep, and David knew it from um, chasing off the lion and the bear and the snakes and whatever else he had to chase off being out there with the sheep. There wasn't anything that him and Jesus could handle. They knew, he knew God was with him, yeah. and God was taking care of him. Well, let's pray. The prayer of salvation. <clears throat> so that everybody that's here is in perfect relationship with the Father. Prayer of salvation is really a prayer of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'll pray this prayer from the depths of your heart, you might even say, Pastor, I don't even know everything about this yet. Don't, don't worry about that. Get the experience. The revelation will come. As soon as you get the revelation of this, your life is going to be changed forever. You ready? Pray this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I know I need you in my life every day. I know I need you in my life every And according day. to John 3, 16. And according to John 3, And John 16, chapter 1. And John chapter 1. When I believe in you. When I believe in you. You give me everlasting life. You give me everlasting and life. And I will not perish. And I will not perish. And I thank you I for thank it. you for it. Thank you. Put your hands out and just say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God.
Jesus, I believe you are the Son of and God. And I receive you into my life right now. And I receive you into my life right now. All of your love. All of your love. All of your mercy. All of your mercy. All of your grace. All of your grace. All of your righteousness. All of your righteousness. Filling every part of my life. Filling every part of my life. Jesus, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of Pray God. Pray in my heavenly prayer language. Pray in my heavenly prayer language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. You might say, Pastor, what just happened to me? You went from darkness to light. You went from fear to faith. You went from your sin to Jesus' righteousness. What just happened is you have totally been made into a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And the very spirit of Almighty God has just come to make his abode in you. If you haven't heard our messages and teachings on it, I encourage you to email me and say, Pastor, I need to hear those teachings. We'll send them to you in a YouTube video link. Don't even cost you no money. Just phew. it'll be in an email and you'll have it in Jesus mighty name. Jesus now, mighty name. every time we come here, we come here on purpose to be a blessing to you. And we want you to know that we're fired up about the majestic word of God. And we're praying and believing God for you that you catch that same fire we have on the inside of us and turn your community upside down in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Till we see you again, it's what we say. Remember this. We love we you, love you. And, and God, God loves, loves you. you, and, and Goliath Jesus. is dead without a head. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. <laughs> Lord. Amen. See you soon.